everybody. Today we're going to talk about multiplying mixed numbers. Yesterday we were multiplying fractions and uh, so really today we're just adding one more step. What do we do when we have mixed numbers uh, instead of just having regular fractions? So the first thing I want to discuss right now is how to change mixed numbers into improper fractions. Uh, you may have seen this before probably last year when you were fifth graders um, so hopefully this is review. But let's take 3 and 3 eighths for example. If I want to change that into an improper fraction, I have to do what's called go, go around, some people call it going around the horn. Okay, it's a baseball term. But to go around the, the, the horn, here's what we do. I got to be able to choose a color here. That's kind of a fun color. 8 times 3. We always start at the bottom here and multiply times 3, so that's 24. And then we add this numerator. 24 plus 3 is 27. And then we put that over the denominator. And we have 27 over 8. And that's what this would be as an improper fraction. Okay? Now we can reverse this and take 27 divided by 8. And if you divide 27 by 8, 8 goes into 27 three times. 3 times 8 is 24. We get a remainder of 3. So the remainder goes over the divisor. We have 3 and 3 eighths, which you can see is what we had at the start here. Okay, so it's 27 over 8, 3 and 3 eighths have the same value. They mean the same thing. So let's change 8 and 2 fifths into an improper fraction. So we start here at the bottom. 5 times 8, which is 40, add 2, that's 42, and then we put that over our denominator, which is 5, 42 over 5. Okay, so that's 8 and 2 fifths when we write it as an improper fraction. How about 4 and 5 sixths? I'll go ahead and move the page down here a little bit. And 4 and 5 sixths, we do the same thing. 6 times 4, which is 24, plus 5, that's 29, and we put that over our denominator, which is 6, 29 over 6. One more here, 4 times 10, that's 40, add 1, which is 41, put that over the denominator of 4. Okay, later this year I'll show you exactly why this works uh, to go around the horn like this. Um, a lot of times we show you these tricks in math and you think, well, that's a cool trick. I'll remember that. But it's nice to know why it works as well. So I'll show you that later this work there we well later well, later this year. There's a good reason why it works. Okay. Okay, so with whole numbers. If we want to write them in, in fractional form, you just take the whole number and place it over 1. 10 equals 10 over 1. 13 equals 13 over 1. 36 is 36 over 1. 800 is 800 over 1. The reason that we can do that is because fractions, remember, are division problems. 10 divided by 1 does equal 10. 36 divided by 1 equals 36, and so on. Okay? Um, so you can any whole number you can write it as a fraction over one. And if you ever see a fraction over one, like 800 over one, that's just a whole number value of 800. Okay. So if we have two fifths and we're multiplying it by 35, uh, I like two fifths. That's written as a fraction, but 35 is a whole number. I can rewrite it as a fraction by putting it over one. Now it would be good to rewrite this whole problem. Two fifths times 35 over 1. Now, as we've discussed before, if I want, I can simplify before I multiply these together. Simplify while the numbers are smaller and more vulnerable. It's a little bit easier to do the simplifying when they're um, smaller like this. I see 5 here. I see 35 here. They are both divisible by 5, meaning 5 goes into both of them nicely. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 35 divided by 5 is 7. And that's all the more simplifying I can do. See how in the denominators I just have 1s now? 
That tells me I'll have a whole number for my answer. 2 times 7 is 14 over 1 times 1, which is 1. And remember, any fraction over 1 is just a whole number. It's 14. Now, actually, it makes a lot of sense that 2 fifths of 35 is 14. And I'll show you, I'll show you why I say that makes a lot of sense here, OK? If I were to take, since I'm dealing with fifths here, if I were to take 35 and split it into five equal portions, I'll just make five squares here. Pretend they're all the same size. I know they're not, but you can pretend they are. Uh, if I take 35 and split it five ways, 35 divided by 5 is 7. I'd have 7 here, 7 here, 7 here, 7 here, 7 here. 7, 14, 21, 28, 35. That's your 35 split five ways. <coughs> if you want two of those five parts, um, let's just say I take these two of the five parts. We have 7 and 7, which together is 14, isn't it? So it makes sense when we say that 2 fifths of 35 is 14. Okay, so let's take a look at another example here. I have 40 times 3 eighths. And, um, and again, I like 3 eighths, but 40 is not expressed as a fraction. I can write it as a fraction by putting it over 1. So I'll rewrite this 40 over 1 times 3 eighths. Okay, now. Again, can I do any simplifying? Uh, yes, I can. I see the 8 here. 8 times 5 is 40. So I'm going to divide 8 by 8, which is 1. 40 divided by 8, which is 5. Okay, and now 5 times 3 is 15. Over 1 times 1, which is 1. So again, anything over 1 is just a whole number answer. So my final answer here is simply a mess. It's simply 15. Okay. Oh, that's not much nicer. You get the idea, though, right? Hey, 15. Okay. All right, let's take a look at another example here. Okay, if you're multiplying and both of the values are mixed numbers, I'm going to show you the wrong way to do this problem. And I'm showing you this because a lot of students do this and because it's easy. The problem is it's very wrong. Um, some students think, well, can't I just multiply the whole numbers, 2 times 4, which is 8? And then take 3 fifths and multiply it by 1 half. 3 times 1 is 3. 5 times 2 is 10. And so then have an answer of 8 and 3 tenths. Well, that is very easy, but it's also very, very, very wrong. And you're going to see that shortly. What we need to do is change these into improper fractions by going around the horn. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 3 is 13, we put that over 5. Okay, 13 over 5. Oh, this seems like so much work. It's not bad. Times, and do the same thing here. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. And then put that over 2. So 9 over 2. Oh, these numbers are not very nice. I go back here and I look to see if I can do any simplifying, and I can't. There isn't anything that I can simplify. So all I can do is multiply across. The bottom ones are easier. 5 times 2 is 10. Now the numerator is 13 times 9. I know you could do this yourself. I'm going to save, save you a little bit of time here. 13 times 9 would be 117. Okay? So I have an answer of 117 over 10. Now, I can't leave my answer like this because that is an improper fraction. So I need to change it back into a mixed number. And to do that, I divide. All fractions are division problems. I will divide 117 by 10. 117 divided by 10. 10 won't go into 1, but it will go into 11 once. I get a remainder of 1. Bring down this 7. 10 goes into 17 one time. And I'll subtract these. Oops. Well, now I've done it. Here we go. I, I need to bring this down here so we can see a little more space. Uh, I get a remainder of 7. Now, when we're dealing with mixed numbers, 
when you get to the end of the whole number here, we have 11. Just take your remainder, put it over your divisor. So we have 11 and 7 tenths. Okay? And that's what we write here, 11 and 7 tenths. And now we're done. All right, usually the problems will be easier than that. That was kind of a tough one. Let's try it. See how this answer here is quite a bit different from what we had over here, 8 and 3 tenths, 11 and 7 tenths. It's very, very different. So you can see um, doing a little shortcut here didn't work. It did not give us the correct answer. All right, so let's try 7 and 1 half times 8 and 2 thirds. Again, we need to change these into improper fractions. So here 2 times 7 is 14 plus 1 is 15 and then put that over 2 times here's the same thing 3 times 8 is 24 plus 2 is 26 and we'll put that over 3 okay now can I do any simplifying here yes first of all 3 and 15 can both be divided by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 15 divided by 3 is 5. And then 2 and 26 are both even. I can divide them both by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 26 divided by 2 is 13. I only have 1s in my denominators. So I know my answer will be a whole number. 5 times 13. I know, again, you could do this yourself, but I'm going to help you out. 5 times 13 is 65 and that's over 1 times 1 which is 1 all right so my answer is 65 over 1 is simply 65 hmm there we go a little better um i i think that's a little surprising are you a little surprised that 7 and 1 half times 8 and 2 thirds ended up equaling exactly 65 it is a little surprising but it is the right answer all right, we're going to do one more problem here. It's a word problem. A student skis three and one half miles in an hour. An instructor can ski one and one third times as far in an hour, that same amount of time. How far does the instructor ski in an hour? So if it's one and one third times as far, times sounds like we're multiplying. We have three and one half times one and one third. So again, I need to go around the horn here. Two times three is six, plus one is seven. Put that over two times. And then here, three times one is three, plus one is four. We put that over three. Can I do any simplifying? Uh, yes, the two and the four are both even. Two divided by two is one. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Now I can multiply 7 times 2 is 14 over 1 times 3, which is 3. So I have 14 over 3. That's my answer. But it is improper, so I'm going to go ahead and change this back to a mixed number also. And again, I do that by dividing since that's what the fraction bar means. 14 divided by 3. Um, well, 3 times 4 is 12. When I subtract, I have a remainder of 2. The remainder goes over the divisor. So 2 thirds, 4 and 2 thirds. So 4 and 2 thirds. And um, this is how far the instructor skis. So that's miles. And that's in an hour. So per hour, there's my label, four and two thirds miles in an hour. Um, if you were to subtract three and one half from that, I mean, you'd be looking at, you know, one and one sixth more miles than, um, than the little feather can go, okay? So anyway, that's, that's how we do this, and I hope that helps, and I will uh, see you later.